humor and irony in the prologue to the canterbury tales like an ideal satirist chaucer had no purpose to reform in the canterbury tales he never wished to change people as well as their morals and manners characterization turns out to be chaucer's key device for satire geoffrey chaucer geoffrey chaucer is one of those artists who exerts who exert a puzzling amount and variety of humor and wields it in a remar- remar- remarkably subtle manner he is the first great humorist in english literature chaucer's humor is refined the purpose of humor in chaucer's poem is not to reform but just to illuminate and illustrate just what they are it is said that chaucer's humor is gentle because he has a deep affection a deep affection for humanity he is a lover of mankind a philanthropist he is a philanthropist he loves men equally whether good or bad he neither he neither condemns fools nor shows disgust for bad people he gently unmasks their nature manner or behavior he wants to give pleasure by portraying their funny traits artistically revealing the secret of their foibles he intends to am- amuse or delight the reader his humor is free from harsh satire however he exposes the vices of the society in a subtle and gentle manner the canterbury tales reveal chaucerian humor in all its varieties the prologue in the prologue in the prologue in the prologue every character is dexterously enlivened with humorous touches chaucer's characterization of almost all the characters is humor- humorously satirical irony becomes much more conspicuous in chaucer's treatment of characters especially when the poet shows a corrective motive however chaucer as an ironist and satirist is not out to reform people but he surely finds amusement in the absurdities affectations and some of the minor vices of the people he deals with the chief point to note about his his use of ironical satire is that he does not feel enlarged or infuriated infuriate infuriated by the weaknesses and shortcomings of human beings because his attitude towards them is not only tolerant but also indulgent this reason helps temper this reason helps temper his irony with humor making the overall satire thoroughly delightful and free from the taint of cynicism and pessimism we find kindly and patronizing humor in, humor humor in the case of the clerk of oxford the oxford clerk is a scholar in shreds but he too loved to learn and to teach 
there is an ironic humor in the case of the psych of the doc, doctor of psyche chaucer's humor becomes coarse and rough when he presents the miller and the reeve his humor is not and, and in this way and we have seen in this description till now that Chaucer, that hum, his humor chaucer's humor is not tinged tinged with bitter satire chaucer looked on and smiled on the follies of the people he was a master of irony and sympathetic humor chaucer's humor is almost innocent fun satire is found in the in the world of chaucer but it is rarely coarse it is seldom severe and never never savage his humor is not tinged with fear fears his humor is not tinged with fears and harsh satire chaucer's use of irony to build up a satirical portrait and to make us laugh is clearly seen in his presentation of the prioress the prioress speaks french fluently according to the school of stratford at bow this is an ironical reference to the prioress's aristocratic breeding aristocratic breeding her dress and her fashionable manners are also ironically described her charitable nature too is depicted in such a way as to amuse us her spirit of charity is seen chiefly in her feeding her pet dogs with expensive foods a clearly ironical feeling the ironic implication throughout the portrait of the prioress is that in spite of her holy uh, in spite of her holy calling she is more concerned with worldly things than with the spirit at the same time chaucer makes the prioress quite amiable by emphasizing her essential femininity the portrait of the prioress is thus a prominent example of chaucer's tolerant view of human feelings textual textualized in an amusing and delightful manner thus we find that humor including irony and satire is the most conspicuous ingredient in chaucer's characterization of the pilgrims in the prologue thank you